So as we are aware, uh, the uh, next generation sequencing has kind of identified uh, underlying germline mutations in many of the myeloid neoplasms. And uh, it's been well established now over the last few years that certain germline predisposition disorders recognized both by the WHO as well as the ICC, uh, such as, you know, RUNX1, ETV6 that are associated with platelet dysfunction and uh, CEBPA, DDX41, which are really not associated with any specific pathognomic abnormality. And then there are some with TP53 mutations. And then we have the bone marrow failure syndromes like GATA2. So these are kind of typically uh, uh, we are aware that can, uh, 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 that lead uh, or, or predispose these patients or individuals to developing myeloid neoplasms. But then there are underlying pan-cancer uh, germline predisposition genes, so to speak, uh, mostly involving DNA repair uh, mismatch that also lead uh, to myeloid neoplasms. Now, these are classically known to uh, result in solid tumors, but they also predispose to myeloid neoplasms. And because it's something new, uh, uh, there's not much data on the frequency of these uh, uh, gene mutations in um, uh, myeloid neoplasms. And that's what we sought to uh, uh, study in our abstract uh, that's being presented at EHA. So we looked into our database in patients um, who had both a myeloid neoplasm, MDS or AML, or any other myeloid neoplasm, and a subsequent or antecedent solid tumor. And we identified those patients who had comprehensive NGS done on both the solid tumor, the matched uh, germline uh, uh, on the peripheral blood, as well as the uh, myeloid neoplasm. And we uh, sequenced these DNA uh, mismatch repair genes to look for the mutations in the germline component. And surprisingly, we found uh, we had a, a the entire cohort comprised of about 77 patients. And surprisingly, we found about 20% of those patients had a mutation in one of these in the germline, which is uh, quite amazing to see. And of these patients, about um, a subset of these were actually therapy-related myeloid neoplasms. And 22% uh, of patients with therapy-related had an underlying germline predisposition uh, mutation. So this is some um, interesting finding. And, and the uh, implications of these for clinical practice is actually uh, uh, immense, I should say. Uh, so the, the summary or the take home for this is that the uh, mutation, germline mutation in this pathway is not uncommon in uh, any patient with myeloid neoplasm. And especially in patients with myeloid neoplasm who may have had a previous solid tumor, it's important to look for these. So the there needs to be a very low threshold threshold to initiate the germline testing in these patients. And as we are all aware, the germline testing is a pretty complicated process. This should involve uh, talking to the patient. Genetic counselors uh, need to be involved. Uh, the testing needs to be done on appropriate sample, often skin fibroblast culture, and there needs to be a post-test counseling. And then there needs to be a um, talk, uh, of course, with permission with the family members also. So it involves a ton of these activities that follows uh, after this. So it's really important to kind of at least identify these uh, mutations so the patients are aware.